goes 1.2 miles. And keep in mind, with the antenna, keep the antenna like this, it'll go in all directions like it's supposed to. Now, now I'm going to show you how you can toggle the, the power settings of this. And before I forget, this is what the power cord looks like. It's kind of short, but it's cool. But now, on to plug it in. Okay, now I have the power cord plugged in into my power surge protector back there. Now here is what you do. I'm going to have to set the camera down for this part. Okay, so, you take the transmitter, okay? You take this part right here. See on the back, there's, that's where you plug it in. So this is what you do. You hold on to the power button, and you have to you have to hold on to it while you plug it in. So hold on to it, and get it in there. And now you should see it see it come on. It'll say L. Now you can use the tuning buttons to change this. You can go up to high. For low, you'll go a quarter mile, and for high, you'll go 1.2 miles. So, I'll just have it on low. Now I'll tell you the frequency range of this. Now this part, you choose the highest frequency that this thing can go. Now I'm going to go all the way up, just so you can see how far it can go. As you can see, it can go up pretty high. Definitely higher than my FM radio can go. And just so you know, this is the highest it will go. 153.6 megahertz. Okay, then you hit the power button again. And now I'll show you what the lowest frequency you want it to be. You can have it anywhere you want, just like you had the the highest setting. And I'll show you how low it goes. As you can see, it can go to the Japanese FM band and even lower. As you can see, I can even go on the frequency baby monitors or well, analog ones or whatever operate on. I could go on and on and on. So this thing is really nice, really. So I can go all the way to 0, 0.0 megahertz. Okay. Now you know the frequency range of this. And I like to do is unplug it and then plug it back in and I get get all set up. Now I'll show you the next part. Now, keep in mind, this thing does not come with an auxiliary cable, which looks like this. So, you might want, if you don't already have those cables, you probably want to go get them. But, I've had these for a couple of years, and they're pretty cool. Now, on to the next step. You can have whatever source of music you like. Whenever you got a PSP or an iPod or something, or even a computer right there. Now, here's the other thing. There's a volume knob on this. You can adjust the volume with it. Now, I do know for a fact that if you t turn it up too high, you'll overmodulate it it'll be all distorted. Now, I'll show you a good way how to get the, just the right volume without, you know, distortion or whatever there shouldn't be. So this is what you do. You see the screw right here? You know, this is where all the screws are, but this you see it right here we're gonna and you, you can see this little thing right here on the volume knob it shows you where you are 
like that. I say, if you see it like that, that means you're halfway there or something. So, if you want to get really nice sound without a bunch of distortion or anything, you take the volume knob, and you see that little thing right there that shows you where you are, and you have it point at the screw, like, like that. You want to make sure you can measure that with your finger, put it right here, and then go up, like that. Alright, now, I'm going to plug the auxiliary cable. Now, the volume of your source is the other important thing. Because you could also overmodulate it that way if you have it too high. This is what I do with my computer. Hold on a second. Now, here on my computer, I can adjust the volume. Right now, I have it on level 30. And that's the volume I prefer. I can make it go up to 100 if I like. But I just keep it to 30. That's just a good volume right there. Now, it, now <coughs> if you like, if you're like me, you like to make a playlist. I use Winamp. I got some songs right here. I also got a little pacemaker thingy, which changes the speed of them. Sometimes I'll do that out of boredom because it makes the song sound different. So, here's what we're going to do next. You're going to need a radio. This radio can go all the way down to 87.5. As you can see. And that's where I'm going to broadcast. And I could broadcast anywhere else, but for this little demonstration review, I'm just going to do that. Okay, so I have the transmitter plugged in. Turn on. Tune it to where my radio is. Now you don't hear anything. Now, I'm going to play a song. I'll turn it up. And then it should sound pretty good. I'll go to other stations so I can compare the volume. Like this isn't really too much any softer. So you just gotta have this little thing right here pointing against the screw. So that's pretty much it. I must remind you that this is not FCC compliant. So you might want to be careful. And I also would say that this is not the kind of FM transmitter I will leave running at home. Because I don't want to be gone while some FCC field mobile unit looks for a, a triangulate it. I gotta be here at all times. So if they're coming, I just gotta shut it off. So yeah, it was 80 bucks. I got it from Amazon. And I got it within the week. Well, I think. Yeah, a few days anyway. So, and the more technical specifications, it is in stereo. Sound quality is very nice. I recommend you buy this if you want to have a really nice FM transmitter, especially one that does not have an annoying auto off feature, especially if you're playing a game that's a little quiet at times, or Oh, you know what I mean. So, enjoy yourselves. Oh, and a little thing I should say to Josh. I, I notice you have an HP box in your room. Probably a printer. Well, here's a fun fact. For about four years now, I have also have an HP box laying around in my room. Pretty ironic.
Yeah, that's a dance pad, so. Okay. Have a good day. I kind of left out a couple of things that you should know. The second knob right here is the microphone volume, so you can actually plug in the microphone if you want. Now, you want to plug in a stereo microphone. For some reason, if you plug in a mono one, which I don't know, I'm not sure why, it would damage it. And about the audio setting, how, how high it should be. Now, on one app, I use a little thing called Stereo Tool, SA Stereo Tool. It's an enhancer. It's unregistered, but it is pretty cool.